Mr. Gopi Krishna, who is the direct, assistant director of National Accreditation Board of Certification Bodies, Quality Council of India. Mr. Gopi Krishna joins a, holds a degree in electrical engineering and a postgraduate diploma in thermal power plant engineering from NPTI Nagpur. He has 14 years of experience in the field of engineering, inspection, testing, and commissioning of thermal and solar power plants. He's also worked as head of ins inspection, testing, and commissioning of railway coaches at Coach Manufacturing Factory. His, he, has, he was part of NABCB team, which developed Aerospace Quality Management System Scheme, a certification scheme for aviation, space, and defense industry certification as per AS 91041 and ISO IEC 17021T. Welcome, sir. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, I will uh, speak about the national accreditation system, assuring quality, regulatory compliance, and facilitating trade. So, uh, this is a slide which speaks about uh, how the international ecosystem for quality works. So, in the left you can see uh, the products and processes and services and there are certain standards and certification, testing and inspection. These are all uh, some of the inspection and uh, certification uh, which the CAPS, uh, we call it as conformity assessment bodies perform this and there is in the top is the accreditation body which mandates and which uh, oversights on all these bodies who do uh, the inspection and certification. So, in the bottom it's a metrology, it's basically the traceability of uh, um, the products and the reference materials used for calibration and other equipments used for these uh, inspection and certification. So, quality infrastructure is uh, a system contributing to the global, uh, governmental policy objectives uh, and uh, the regulatory requirements and other uh, things. I just uh, want to skip this slide. We will see the details in other coming slides. So, this is the building block of QI and you can see the societal concerns like health and safety, environment, uh, economic well-being, fair trade, consumer protection and regulations and uh, in the middle you can see the components like standardization, metrology, conformity assessment, aggregation and pre and uh, post market surveillance and the bottom is the business concern. So, uh, what is a conformity assessment? Is it, it involves a set of process uh, that show your product, service or system and sometimes uh, people fulfill the requirements and characteristics described in a standard specification. So, actually uh, the certification, inspection, testing, validation and verification is all comes under the uh, conformity assessment activity. The main forms of uh, conformity assessment like certification is a third party attestation related to product process and service or, or person. So, inspection is examination of a product, a design, product, process or installation and determination of its conformity with uh, specific requirements or standards. Testing, testing uh, I think you all know about this is the determination of one or more characteristics of an object of a conformity assessment such as product, material or process. Uh, according to a procedure. Then validation or verification, these are the new, two new terms. Uh, actually, this is for client, basically uh, through uh, the provision of objective evidence that the requirements for a specific intended future use or application have been fulfilled. And verification is conformity, uh, uh, confirming the claim actually. This is the validation which, which is a pre-activity and verification is the post. We will see that in the other slides, detail. A conformity assessment scheme, these are all set of rules and procedures that describes the objects of conformity assessment, identifies the specified requirement and provides a methodology for performing conformity assessment. Uh, it may be operated at an international, regional, national, sub-national or industry level uh, requirements. So, this is the difference between accreditation body and certification body. Uh, the accreditation body performs uh, accreditation to assess the consistency, impartiality and competence of the conformity assessment bodies. Uh, so, NABCB and NABL, these two are, uh, NABCB is actually the accreditation body for the certification bodies and NABL is for the laboratories. And uh, certification body performs the conformity assessment service. Examples are like testing laboratories, 
inspection bodies, certification bodies, validation and verification bodies. Uh, this slide shows about the what is the first party, second party and third party uh, activity like uh, if uh, it is performed by a person or organization that provides the object, example manufacturer or service provider himself, it's a first party. Second party is a person or a organization that has the user interest in it, it's, it comes in the second party and third party is the uh, performed by a person or organization that is independent of the provider of the object of conformity assessment. Example, these are all the third party certification bodies, laboratory or inspection body and accreditation body also. So these are all, uh, you can see this one ISO IC 17021-1, this is the management system certification body uh, standard and the audits and they do the audit and certify the organization based on this standard. So ISO IC 17065 is the product certification standard on which the uh, certification body performs the audits and certifies the organization. So this is 17024. It is for a personal certification when a person meets certain uh, specific scope competencies. This is ISO IC 17020 is the inspection stand, inspection activity uh, when an inspection body performs and gives a report on certain commodities, items, facilities or installation. And this is the validation and verification body is ISO IC 17029. Those who validates or verifies the claim and confirms it. So then here comes the accreditation body. So accreditation body is um, we follow ISO IC 17011 to accredit these certification bodies. So we call it as CAPS, Confirmity Assessment Bodies. And uh, we are all monitored by a peer evaluators. Uh, we, we will be evaluated by uh, the accreditation body group or uh, it's a regional or international as per ISOIC 17040. So this is the total accreditation uh, and conformity assessment uh, cycle you can say. And there comes the laboratory 17025, ISOIC 17025. So this is the difference between the uh, declaration of conformity and certification of conformity. So when uh, a supplier self declares his own conformity confor and he conforms to uh, certain uh, standards and this is referred to as uh, a declaration of conformity and uh, when a statement of conformity is assured by a third party, it basically uh, involves in certain as per standard as we uh, saw in the previous slides. So this will be called as certificate of conformity. So this is the difference between the declaration and the certification of conformities. Uh, these are all some of marks of conformity. ISI, this is the Bureau of Energy Efficiency uh, 5 star rating and CE marking and Eco Global. So you can quickly go through this and uh, what is the benefit of conformity assessment? Like the government and regulators needs. The conformity assessment gives regulators confidence that the requirements in regulations have been met. The manufacturer and service products actually they uh, they have the confidence that uh, uh, their uh, delivery or the specific they are met with the specifications or what the standards are. And consumers and uh, as a consumer, the conformity assessment provides uh, with the confidence that the product have met the expected standards. So this is a. Gradation is a third party attestation related to conformity assessment body conveying the formal demonstration of its competence to carry out the specific conformity assessment acts. So these are all already we have saw the previous slides and just skip it. Yes, uh, this is one of the important, this is the, the international bodies like International Accreditation Forum, IAF, International Laboratory Accreditation Cooperation, this is ILAC. These two are uh, uh, global level and the regional level we have European Cooperation for Accreditation and in uh, Asia Pacific region we have Asia APAC, Asia Pacific Accreditation Cooperation and other African, Inter-American and Arab accreditation systems. So the signatories of uh, these networks represent 96% of the global GDP. Yeah, this is uh, just to uh, showcase how the world trade uh, has been uh, recognized by uh, using the accredited uh, certification bodies or uh, confirmed assessment systems like there is a TBT agreement with the world trade organization so you can read out the class 611 of the states that adequate 
and enduring technology competence of the relevant conformity members in exporting members. So basically, uh, this works when the product is exported from one country to another country and when uh, the certificate, when the product which carries a certificate which is having accreditation by the national uh, body or uh, which is recognized in international system, then the product gets uh, the value. Uh, the key principles in world trade includes non-discrimination against the foreign goods, facilitates access to markets and includes features specific for preparation and application of regulation, encourages use of international standards, uh, helps distinguish between the legitimate and uh, protectionist um, motivation for the technical barriers to trade, helps avoid unnecessary technical barriers to international trade and allow protection of legi legitimate interests like health, safety, environment and uh, trade practices and national security. So, uh, for public policies, the government ha can help to improve the uh, performance of business by encouraging the use of conformity assessment and standards. Uh, government can rely on aggregation bodies to minimize risk and promote trade. So, these are all some of the uh, uh, points, bullets that uh, describes the, how the aggregation can support the global uh, trade. So, for uh, national authorities and regulators, the MLA multilateral agreements uh, between the national aggregation body have helped make aggregation and internationally recognized approval to demonstrate the compliance against the re, uh, regulation and agreed standards. So these arrangements actually have the, uh, given the credible and uh, robust framework when there is a bi uh, government to go government bilateral agreements have been signed. So uh, these are all the accreditation which supports global trade. Uh, there is a doors are open for o overseas equally as well as the, uh, in the domestic market. So our products can also uh, go to the foreign uh, market and uh, there is an increase of choice for the consumers when the range, and goods, uh, range of uh, goods and services are available in the markets. Uh, this is a slide on how the aggregation values are added to the supply chain. Uh, aggregation operates across all sectors in supply chain. Uh, you can name any of the sector. Uh, they all aggregation uh, works there like uh, the aggregated conformity assessment bodies have given inspections, certification all over all the sectors and it adds value and manages the potential risk in supply chain and reduces the information asymmetries or difference between the operators in global uh, value chain and serves the global communication between international trade partners. So it reduces uh, the cost of trade and doing business, enhancing the technical transfer and increasing investments and demonstrates uh, compliance with the legislative requirements. Yeah, this is uh, the QA infrastructure in India. You can see the uh, National Standards Body which is a Bureau of Indian Standards and Quality Council of India is a national accreditation body and National Physics Laboratory, they manage the metrology system and the Directorate of Legal Metrology and these uh, certification inspection reports and test uh, reports are given by these uh, bodies in the bottom and uh, the, uh, below is the consumer who are getting benefit out of these products and services. And about QCA, uh, QCA is set up in January 1997 by Government of India with Association CIA and FIKI. QCA is an independent autonomous organization under Department of uh, Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade, DPIT, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Uh, QCA was established as a national accreditation body to lead quality movement by undertaking the national quality campaign. Chairman of QCA is appointed by Honorable Prime Minister of India. So these are all some uh, QCA mandate, providing the accreditation framework in the country, spreading the quality movement, providing uh, the right and unbiased information on quality and related standards, represent India's interest in international fora, help establish uh, quality of Indian products and services. So this is our uh, organogram, uh, there is a council which then the, the governing body, then there is a secretary general who is the head of uh, the all the system and there is a secretary. We have uh, NABCB, one of the constituent board, NABL, NABH, NABH is for the national accreditation body for hospitals and NABT is for uh, educational training institutes. There is NBQP is for quality promotion and there is special product groups like PPID Z, Z is one of the famous scheme like zero defect and zero effect 
and most of the msmes are getting benefit out of it and there are three levels of uh, certification stages like bronze silver and gold and uh, anyone interested you can uh, go to the z website and uh, there is a for getting a bronze level uh, is a very simple process of just uploading when you have this udan uh, udan uh, id it, it will be easy for you and there is a pad division pad is actually project, project analysis and uh, uh, department then uh, nbcb mandate uh, the body where i come from to provide accreditation to conformity assessment bodies certification inspection validation verification bodies and to support the facilitate government and technical uh, technical regulators and industry in india in verifying the remonstrating uh, compliances i skip this uh, yeah so these are all the some of the schemes we operate uh, management system certification it includes the quality management system qms iso 9001 14,001, ISO 22,000, and a uh, list of items. Like you can see the lot of standards. So uh, out of these is the, you can see the aerospace quality management system, EQMS AS9100. This is one of the management system certificates we have recently uh, recently launched in February 2023. And uh, apart from that, we have the product certification scheme, uh, personal certification. inspection bodies and validation and verification bodies which includes the oscs scheme and other things and we are over uh, 20000 plus accredited certificates have been issued through 100 accredited cbs and uh, around 1 lakh plus inspection reports have been generated out of 100 plus accreditation uh, ibs we call it inspection body so these are the nbcb journey we have uh, uh, there these are the mla and mra multi uh, multilateral agreements and uh, multi recognition agreements we have with uh, international accreditation forum and uh, apac which we discussed in the earlier slides uh, these are all the industry sectors covered by uh, the accredited uh, caps which includes food uh, textiles leather paper and pulp chemical rubber uh, cement concrete and uh, machineries ship building aerospace electricity gas supply water supply construction etc and uh, these are all the accreditation standards so uh, when we talk about the accreditation we nbcb grants accreditation based on these uh, international standards so you can see 17020 is for inspection bodies and uh, the certification body standards includes iso ic 17021 so the other schemes the other uh, standards are listed below and uh, the, for the laboratories nbl follows iso ic 17025 and uh, proficiency test providers iso ic 17043 and uh, reference material producers 17034 and this is uh, some of the laboratories uh, areas where the nbl is uh, giving the accreditations you can see the testing labs or producers calibration laboratories medical laboratories and uh, proficiency testing providers yeah these are uh, these are all the signatory where nabl and nabcb has the uh, uh, with multilateral and agreements we have signed with apac international accreditation forum and ilac uh, the benefits of this includes whenever an indian uh, cb or ib has been accredited by nabcb or nabl they get international equivalence and acceptance of accredited certificates and assurance of quality and this uh, of course special rates trade yeah this is the structure what we have i have been discussing in the throughout my slide that uh, the accreditation is the uh, in the top uh, where it will be oversight by the peer evaluation and then uh, accreditation board accreditation bodies like nbcb nabl we have oversight on the certification and the inspection bodies based on international standards and uh, out of that the accredited cbs they will have oversight on the product and process uh, service providers and that will give the confidence trust and assurance to the consumers and government this is the accreditation framework uh, this is the equivalence uh, that we have discussed in earlier slide that apac uh, and after that the accreditation body then conformity assessment body and the certificate of organizations so here it comes the international equivalence uh, when uh, a cb has been accredited by the uh, national accreditation board this is uh, these are all the uh, countries which have signed which have the if mla and ilac mras so you can see uh, 
the blue one in the left uh, IL, I, IFML is signatories and the yellow is not non signatories and the right you can see for the laboratories I lack. So around 98 accreditation body uh, members are there and uh, with the IL, IFMLA and uh, 109 countries uh, accreditation bodies with ILAC. Uh, this is how the uh, mutual recognition works. Uh, when there is a G2G mutual recognition is taking place uh, with uh, different country regulators and then the regulator designates the accreditation body to accredit a confirmed assessment body. Uh, based on the conference which uh, prevails using the ISO or IEC international standards and then these certification bodies issues the uh, certificates uh, for a management system or a product or process then it can be mutually recognized and it can be accepted for exports and, uh, and other countries. Uh, this is about inspection body. Inspection is uh, the examination of product, process, service or installation. And there are three, three categories, usually A, B, C, we call it as, as per ISO 17020. The standard itself classifies the bodies into three, which is uh, type A is the third party, which uh, they don't have, uh, they are totally independent. That's a type A. And type B is, is those the inspection body who do the inspection for themselves, basically. And type C, there is a, a small difference between that A and C, that in type C, uh, the same inspection body will do the design, and other consultancy also which is a threat to impartial but then they have a small uh, uh, bifurcation that the same inspector will not do the same uh, inspection of the same item which has been uh, which has come under the impartiality. So uh, usually the regulators and other government bodies accepts type A inspection bodies which is a totally independent and uh, DGQA has uh, empaneled a third party type A NABC accredited inspection bodies for inspections in defense procurement. I think uh, our previous speakers have already covered this in detail. And uh, this is a re recently launched scheme by NABCB, this AQMS Aerospace Quality Management System. Uh, this is based on ISO IEC 17021 and AS 9104-1. And NABCB provides accreditation under these schemes for the following standards. Like uh, there are three standards. One is AS9100 is actually the requirements for aviation, space and defense organization. And AS9110 is the QMS requirement for the maintenance organizations. And AS9120, this is for the uh, distributors, aviation, space and defense distributors. So there are two certification bodies already under uh, uh, the process of getting the accreditation. One is in the final stage and another in the applicant level. So this is one of the uh, interesting uh, scheme, Scorsia is an international civil aviation organization that requires that verification of the annual carbon dioxide emissions of aeroplane operators through accredited VVPs. So this is the, uh, actually this uh, scheme is mandatory from 2027, but India uh, is in, uh, now it is in the preliminary uh, stage. Like we want to only monitor and give the report to DGCA, actually the airline operators will be giving this to DGCA will be the uh, national level body for uh, operating this scheme. And after 2027 it's mandatory to uh, replace these carbon dioxides with uh, the credits. Basically uh, the airline operators will be purchasing the credits if uh, this is only for the international flights when a flight is traveling from India to other, other countries or uh, from uh, different uh, nations. So this is not for the domestic, but uh, still the carbon dioxide offsetting is for uh, which, is, which airline emits more than 10,000 tons of carbon dioxide. So there is a certain uh, limit for this and this scheme will be mandatory from 2027. Yeah, this is the same and there is another, this is a VERRA is another scheme for uh, uh, carbon, uh, greenhouse gas emission reductions and uh, we have uh, some of the certification bodies already, we have four uh, certification bodies for VCS scheme and uh, for the Corsia we have two bodies who have been already accredited by us. Then this is another important uh, which is interesting for the uh, for your uh, this uh, today's audience that uh, this is the unmanned aircraft system. So this is also a certification scheme, product certification scheme under ISO 17065. So this is uh, based on the uh, certification scheme published by Ministry of Civil Aviation Notification dated 26 January 2022. There are three categories of uh, drones certified 
based on this notification one is the aeroplane the rotorcraft and hybrid unmanned aircraft system these are all small drone type of uh, uh, drones actually this is not a big aeroplane it's a drones the drones are classified and these three uh, yeah this is uh, so the, again the recording aggregation it gives assurance on technical competency reliability and integrity and it demonstrates compliance to the international standards and regulations an increase of operational efficiency one organization can get out of it and facilitates the selection of supplier quality of uh, in supplies and avoids redistricting or inspection enhances competitiveness business advantage performance and safety consumer uh, satisfaction and international equivalence uh, these are all the scheme owners actually these are all some of the scheme owners uh, who trust on nabcb recognition uh, accreditation and uh, these are all qca voluntary scheme actually qca also developed a lot of schemes like uh, for medical devices ic med and uh, the drones ayush mark these uh, and uh, for yoga all this the, these are all the schemes developed by qca and uh, these are all the regulators who rely on the national nabcb accreditation you can see a lot of ministries pngrb fssa uh, bureau of energy efficiency dgqa hal um, other uh, private bodies in this list yeah this is another uh, fssa food uh, safety and uh, standards act 2006 actually you can you might have seen that uh, fssa in the food uh, labeling so uh, the nbsb accredited inspection bodies involves in uh, uh, doing the audit annual audit of these uh, um, food producers so this is uh, also fssa is uh, relying on our accreditation of uh, inspection bodies who are performing these activities and uh, there are other uh, regulators like uh, health and safe, uh, health and safety uh, family welfare pngrb dgca dgca is for uh, for corsia scheme and bureau of energy efficiency to carry out the independent uh, agencies of monitoring and evaluation supporting the implementation of BE's uh, uh, SNL scheme standards and labeling program the star labeling program and actually this is regarding the fake, fake certificates uh, prevailing in the market to uh, to evaluate the original certificates of uh, which is uh, issued by any accredited uh, certification body there is a IAF search search uh, website is there www.ifsearchsearch.org so uh, anyone can uh, search type the uh, there is a company name or a certification number so you can uh, either input of either of the and you can get the output whether it is a original or counterfeit or fake certificate uh, again we are conducting lot of awareness and capacity building program and uh, we are available uh, we are conducting the international capacity building program also for other countries and awareness program uh, with uh, related to the various regulators like FSSA, PNGRB is for actually the uh, CGD, uh, city gas distribution and other uh, oil and gas related sector and CEA other uh, regulators also. This is our website. Uh, actually you can find uh, the aggregated bodies like uh, there is you can go to the uh, publications on a directory publications you can find the schemes which are operated by us and in the directory you can find the aggregated inspection bodies um, like TUB, uh, DNB, RITES, IR class uh, there are about 100 inspection bodies and uh, management system uh, bodies, product certification bodies, inspection, uh, personal certification, validation verification and also we list the uh, when we suspend or withdraw the aggregation, we also list those inspection bodies name in our website so that the public may be aware that uh, these bodies have been uh, delisted or withdrawn with aggregation. Uh, so this is about our website and we are all available in the Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you uh, Swatantra Foundation for giving this opportunity. If any questions you can ask me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Gopakishna, for your presentation. Thank you very much. So we have the awards win ceremony. I request uh, Mr. 
Ram Subramaniam to give away their mementos with the speakers. Before giving the memento, one, one minute. <coughs> the DGQA, DGQ are the entry points for particularly the MSMEs interested in manufacturing for the defense and aerospace. Of course, the aerospace components are little critical. How many of you are really interested in entering the defense and aerospace? Do you have uh, a certification or you want to get the certification? How many of you? One, two, three. You are interested in getting the certification. So, one more thing. Sorry, I am sure uh, you must have covered the Z concept. Uh, the benefits also you have already told, right? There are certain benefits for the Z uh, certificates for bronze, silver and gold. Like uh, some of the major things like you will get uh, 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 the in, in loan, for example if you are taking a loan there will be some 1% uh, or some 0.5% of uh, interest is uh, getting uh, reduced and there is a processing fee is also getting 50% processing fee, I, I didn't remember exactly, some percentage is getting, uh, you will get relaxation in the processing fee. And uh, apart from that, in uh, in bronze, it is very very easy to get the bronze level. And if anyone is interested, you can uh, visit our uh, Z uh, portal. And uh, uh, for for a bronze scheme, it's uh, it, it, the certificate is issued within 24 hours. As per I think, uh, as I remember, it was uh, a few months back. We have that uh, QC has decided to issue the certificates on the same day, uh, which is very easy. Then silver and the gold, you need to. Uh, you need to fulfill certain criteria like uh, certain standard requirements on which uh, there is a site visit to your organization after that the uh, certificate is bas uh, basically being issued. And if anyone is interested, you can uh, uh, visit uh, Z uh, MSME's website and they can. Yeah. There was another uh, one, Z defense that was to have been uh, uh, specially uh, made for uh, the manufacturers for supplying to the armed forces is concerned. That is uh, yet to come out. So therefore, until then, maybe whatever is there are, is there as part of Z. So when the manufacturers apply for getting themselves registered as a manufacturer. So, if you have the Z certification, uh, that will be considered uh, accordingly. But otherwise, there was a Z defense standard that was to come up exclusively. Uh, but since that has not come up at the moment, we continue with our old thing. But uh, when they apply for the registration, they can uh, surely say that they are Z this thing. They will be getting certain kind of uh, uh, priority. Ah, that, that's also because they have a structured mechanism, all following from the. Uh, uh, policy directors from the quality council. Yeah, yeah. right? yes, yes. Uh, yes, in fact, uh, this is for uh, whosoever is, like as I said, uh, from the MOD schemes, as far as certification of the quality is concerned, wherein you take the responsibility, while this will go from the process part of it. See, this Z is basically that will give you the reliability of the processes that you follow in as far as production and the quality of the items is concerned, and that will certainly go a long way in as far as. Uh, obtaining uh, certification for the other such schemes. So this, this is nothing but a zero effect concept, but Indianized concept with uh, more benefits for the MSMEs. I would request you to do that also to support the scheme. This is done by the present central government and Narendra Modi ji to promote MSMEs. Thank you. Colonel Sri Ram, uh, Sri, Sri Ram Kumar. Colonel Kamlesh.
Mr. Prakash. And Mr. Gopi Krishna. I thank all the speakers for spending the valuable time here with us and explaining to us the details of the quality accreditation. Thank you. And thank you all the uh, audience for, for your kind, patient listening to the lectures. Tomorrow we start again by 9.30.